Hello everyone. This video is about making Android ROMs over at a cloud machine. I'm using Google Cloud Platform. You can use any other that you wish. Okay, so first things first, you need to get into a compute machine, VM engine. I'm already here. And you have to create an instance. So create instance, it will tell us what we want. Uh, it will ask us what we want. In our machine, first thing, is it, first thing is name, a name for it. So if you're building Android, so let's say I'm just gonna call it Android build. So it, few things you will know when you're typing the name. You cannot use underscore. You're gonna start with capital letter. So yeah, zone can be any of them whichever you want it's not much difference anyways so yeah you have to change the cpus recommended one is this four cpus and 15 gigabytes of memory then you have to change the boot disk when we can technically we can use any of them but maybe not any of them i'm, I'm not sure which one are here but I'm going to use 16.04 Ubuntu LTS as this is most widely supported and the size I'll give is 500 gigabytes. Okay, then create select and allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. That's it for creating an instance, name, zone, machine type, disk image and allowing the traffic. Then you have to just click on create. Once it is created, it will take a few minutes at most, a one or two minutes. So once it is created, it will be automatically started up, booted up. So it, you will see a green check here, right there. Yes, there is. This instance is running. So what we have to do is SSH into it. You can use any SSH client. I use the Google SSH for Google Cloud Platform Chrome extension. It is, I'll link it in the description. So you just have to click on the SSH and it will open up the extension, this one. So this right here. Okay. So once it is booted up, once we are connected to it, you want to have to you will have to update all the packages and upgrade it well it says zero package updates but there are updates available so what we're gonna do is sudo apt update so this will update all of it yes you see right there 56 packages can be upgraded so that was a lie <laughs> technically so now we will update it sudo apt upgrade and it will download it 50 megabytes it's not a slow internet connection see 60 m megabytes so yeah once it is updated you want to have to install all the packages that are needed to build Android Rome. So they can be found here on wiki.lineageos.org slash device that any device you want slash build any device as in only those that are supported officially by the Lineage OS. Those that are not are you will have a different way but it can follow generally this is kind of a general setup so installing the build packages creating directories installing repos downloading source all this is prepare for device specific code this is taking this is obviously the device specific code you don't want this you can just use this okay i'll just follow up on everything yeah so till this is being installed i'm going to open up a notepad i'm going to write the command that i'll use to install all this so it will be sudo apt install and 
all these packages. So I'm just going to copy them and paste it right here. Then all these packages, if you're building 13, you want to have this one too. Then if you are using any operating system lower than 16.04 Ubuntu, you will want to change this package to 2.8. So where it is, it is right here. So you want to change it to 2.8, but I have 16.04, so yeah. Then we need open JDK. So I'm gonna write this here. Control V. Then we want yeah before that we want platform tools. It can be it uh, these are ADB and fastboot. I'm just gonna say ADB fastboot and one more thing, two more packages. Ccash. It might be installed already. But I don't think it is because for my machine it is not. Ccash and another one is Repo. Repo will have to be updated later because it is not. It, I don't think it is available in the Ubuntu archive, but we'll see about that. So yeah. Hmm. All right. There can be a little issue, so we're gonna put in fix missing right here. So let's just okay that's it. We're gonna copy this big command control C and paste it right here control V. It is a big one, so press enter. Okay, what is it? Fix missing. But okay, maybe um I'm not I don't remember what it was. But okay, it be invalid ABD is what? What am I doing? Look at this. I am S P A W I. Control C. Control V. Enter. Yeah, fix missing works. What was I doing, anyways? Yeah, I need to download all this. Press Y and then enter. It will download it all. It is around 200 megabytes. Right now, today, it is this much. It can change. Today is 21st July. In India, so yeah, it's downloading, and till it's being downloaded, I'm gonna tell you what, 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 what. Okay, so yeah, we got these platform tools. That is ADB and Fastboot. We got them all right here. ADB and Fastboot. Then we have all these packages. We have Maven. We have open JDK. Okay, so then we have to create the directories. We don't really need this bin because bin is for repo as you can see right here. So we can just we can just make the Android source directory. So once it is installed, all of it we'll just need to create a source directory and before that I'll tell you one very useful thing that you should and always use when you're working on a cloud machine well that's my opinion obviously unless you know more than me for what you're doing then you should go with your knowledge unless just follow my lead yeah so all of it is installed right now what we are gonna do is use the screen tool so like S C R W E N. type this and press enter it will open up the screen tool screen tool is essentially is like for the layman's term it is it is a software that works that displays you on a console you can use multiple consoles multiple terminals right here in single console so and it can be resumed later because if you close this terminal if you close this close an ssh connection it closes the terminal also so to prevent that from happening so let's say i'm working and the build process is in between something and 
the connection dies my connection dies if I was not using the screen if and my connection dies all my work will be lost or all the progress will be lost everything will stop right there but if I'm using screen I can just reconnect to that screen later after my connection is back up again I can connect to that screen and I'll resume working right there so yeah I'm in the screen right now I'm in a screen you can check all the screens SCRWN that are active right now hyphen LS it will list all the screen so this is the current one we are working on this one and it is attached if it is not attached it will say detached okay so not much about screen you can create a new screen by pressing ctrl a together and then leaving them then then just pressing c it will create a new screen ctrl a is the escape sequence for screen it can you can change it but i don't know how to but okay Control A C is for creating a new screen. Control A N is for next screen. Control A P is for previous screen. And Control A K is for killing that screen. And Control A Escape is for scrolling up and down. If it just starts scrolling, it will go back and forth in the bash history. Okay, so we are in the screen. Now we have to do is create a directory. So there are a few things that we don't want to mess up with. So we'll just create a new folder. MKDIR. Hello. S. You can name it anything. One for one. I'm just Linux OS 14.1. I'm going to do this. CD. Hello. S. One for one. Now, what we have to do right now is initialize the repository so initializing repository is right here cd in our folder that we will have source in and this is the synchronization command uh, initialization command just copy it it is available in many different places for different ROM it is different like for lineage os it can be found in lineage in many pests the repo it is right here um, for another one let's say um, which one I have this whatever for another room it will be it is available in the manifest repository okay so I'm just gonna paste the one for lineage I just did this it is now gonna ask me a few things or maybe not please tell me who you are right here so I need to have to tell him tell the software who I am so just copy this and paste it right here and then enter your email it's not necessary to write this your real email but it's it is recommended because it is not checked anyways but it is recommended so right so once you're done with this you can just go back and deploy it again so yeah now it's gonna ask me if you want the color display so if you want it yes if you don't then no I'll just say yes. Now the repo has been initialized. Cool. Now let's see what's in here. We have a dot repo folder that is created right now. So we'll go into it. Okay, we don't really need to go into it, but what we have to do is if the device is officially supported by the ROM you are building then you don't need to do this step you can skip forward but if your device is not supported by officially supported by the room you're building you will need the device tree vendor tree and kernel tree for your device so we need to we there are a couple ways you can do that 
you can do it after synchronizing the source you can do it right now but I recommend doing it this way the way I'm doing it through the local manifest so what we we'll have to do is create a directory inside that repo folder so so mkdir dot repo slash local underscore manifest alrighty and now in this folder we have to create an XML file that will have all the repositories that we have to clone that we have to sync every time so put that do this for uh, edit it make a new file nano dot repo slash local manifest so my my recommendation is use a custom name but you can use room service.xml the default one but I should warn you that it might be overwritten at some point if you don't know what you're doing I recommend using a custom name so for example let's say I wanna make I wanna use for x3 device Li Echo Li 1s that's the phone that I have so x3 dot xml all right so it will create a new file what you have to do is put in stuff here so I've created already one for me so you can take this as a template I'll put this in the description as well I'm just gonna copy all this or oh, whatever what did I do just copy and paste here so it is here all right then okay there are a few things that you need to take into account name name is the address on the remote of the repository remote is it says create github you can create a new remote here if you want to if you know how to if you don't know how to you can just check any of these so this is here github name github private AOSB, GitHub, all these. So this is how we create. I'm not sure how to create a remote, but you can learn search on internet. Okay. So remote is that we are using GitHub. It is generally already available in all the source codes. So name is on the path. So this is my CSPS slash Android device Lego X3. So this is Android device Lego X3. Then path where we have to save it. So it's generally like this android underscore device so the device is this android means our android source directory that we created for me i created ls one for one so that will be the android but we don't need to put it here so device slash lee echo that is lee echo slash x3 remote is get up revision is the branch so this branch whatever branch I want to use I'll just put it in there so same for others proprietary are the vendor blobs and kernel is the kernel vendor blobs calls in this if they're just replace just remove the proprietary underscore or Android underscore then replace all the underscores with a slash and it's good to go master is the revision for this and remote is github all right you know with the local manifests enough with the local manifest I'm sorry so now save it press ctrl X to save it then press Y and then enter it will save it now once you're done with this let's say we have not let's see what we have nothing right here So what next we want to do is stop the synchronization process. So synchronization synchronization process, the wiki lineage OS wiki says just type this. Default attribute default values are given here. You can change them as well. So we will use this repo sync J4. Four is the number of threads that your computer can support so as I have a four C 
we created a four CPU machine. So we can have eight threads, technically eight threads. So we will write repo sync J8, eight threads, four CPUs. And C will only fetch the current branch. And it might not be needed, but you should put this force sync if you have some fancy local manifest. Then press enter. Okay, so this will download all the source code of it and this is pretty much it for this video. This is about downloading the source code, initializing a build environment. I'll continue on the next steps to build the ROM and how to fix general errors while building a ROM later in the next video if I make one. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.